Hello folks, this is Mike, PC31 The Vinyl Policeman. And uh, today's video, I'm just gonna cover two subjects, basically. Two records that came out Friday, 1st of December, just gone. Um, one of them is Nick Cave, and one of them is Peter Gabriel. So the first one is Australian Carnage, which is a live album recorded by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis at the uh, Sydney Opera House. And this was uh, 16th to the 18th of December, 2022, last year. So basically, I, I saw this tour over in the UK. I saw it in Portsmouth on the south coast. And um, it, it was it's basically the Carnage tour. And I, there's my ticket from the show there. Um, so I saw the Carnage tour, and that's the Carnage album, which came out 2021. And it's also made up of a lot of tracks. The album is from Ghost Teen, which comes from 2019. Uh, there's one other track, actually, from an earlier album. So basically, on the album, and it's um, it's basically Nick Cave and Warren Ellis, so it's not the Bad Seeds. It's with a backing band as well. There were backing singers and, and drums and various things. But um, if you look at the back cover there, so you've got four tracks each side. So, um, yeah. Bright Horses from Ghost Team, Carnage, White Elephant from Carnage, Levitate, uh, Levi Leviathan from um, Ghost Team, Ghost Team and Ghost Team, Waiting for You from um, Ghost Team, Breathless, that comes from Orpheus, uh, which is about 2004, that's from an earlier album. It's probably the weakest track on this album, actually, in my opinion. And Balcony Man, which is also from Carnage. So, uh, Primarily Ghost Teen and um, Carnage. But it's a really, really strong album. And then you've got the, the genius that is Warren Ellis, multi-instrumentalist, producer, so very clever, and the brilliant Nick Cave. And uh, it was a great gig when I saw them. So I'm really, really pleased that, that this record's come out. And um, it's a really good production. So that's the um, fascinating come out. And it's one piece of vinyl. And it's good old black. Good old black. There we go. So, the second album, um, Peter Gabriel, and it's his first in over 20 years. The last one was Up, which was, I think, 2002. And uh, he's made, there's been other albums since, soundtracks and various things. But when it comes to original material on a studio album, this is the first one for over, over 20 years. And uh, it's, it's a serious record. It, it's one of those, don't do anything else while you're listening to it. This, this is not do a bit of painting and listen to this in the background. This is, um, this is a headphones job. This is really studying it. Take out the booklet, which I'll just show you. Look at the lyrics, look where it comes from. It's absolutely, it's a classic Peter Gabriel, fascinating album. Some tracks on it are utterly spectacular. Um, wonderful tracks. I'll tell you about them in a moment. Few which haven't connected with me yet, but it's one of those albums that's full of kind of emotional connect connection, you know, musically, lyrically. It's, it's a heavyweight album. It's, in, it's incredible. Um, there's some various mixes of it. This is the Dark Side mixes. And so you've got two records, three tracks on each record, 12 tracks on the album in total. There's the back. And as I say, this is called the Dark Side Mixes. Now, a particular person mixed this for Peter Gabriel. And um, I really like Peter Gabriel, so I bought the other mix as well, which is the Bright Side Mixes. And it's... The record, I say, so it's a remix, the actual album, and it, the tracks are brighter, um, certain instruments pop through more, so it's a different kind of production. Um, everything else is the same, though, the artwork, etc., etc., except for blue, you've got, you've got pink. I mean, the inner, basically, is pink striped down the middle, but uh, other than that, it's the same, but the record is, is remixed. Order's the same, the booklet in the middle, exactly the same, apart from the colour changes. Um, let's show you, so AO, just to talk about that for a moment. So 
AO, basically that stands for input output, but it's also one of the moons of Jupiter. So that's where the actual title comes from. And fascinatingly, what Peter Gabriel did with this one, with the 12 tracks on the album, he released he's released one um, during, the, during this year for, at each full moon. And so basically, I think there was two released in August. So you've actually had the 12 tracks out there all the way through the year. But um, my understanding was it was just uh, streaming, which I haven't listened to any of them at all because I was waiting for the physical material. By the way, this is how in, as I say, the, the dark side mix, this one, the red one, the, the bright mix. If you were to get the uh, the CD little package, which has come out, which I haven't got, um, you've got the dark side mix, you've got the bright side mix. There's also apparently a, and I think it's called the inside mix or something and it's a combination of the two i haven't got that but what i've done is in march the box set's coming out super deluxe box set hard cover book various things everything's in it cds the whole lot i don't you have download codes with these records so i've heard all the mixes on the downloads um but the box set's coming out in march which which i've ordered okay um so that will have absolutely everything. And that looks a really, really glossy, spectacular, very arty kind of box set. So I'm looking forward to that. So the actual booklet you get with it is a flimsy one with this. But the way Peter Gabriel's done it is for each song, he selected a piece of artwork or he commissioned an artist to actually produce a piece of artwork. So for... Each one, you, you've got it, as I say, and I, and I won't go through each one, but they're all very, very different. So you get who, who the actual credits, who was on the song, the lyrics, and then you get a write-up from the artist on why that piece of artwork. And um, they were all selected by Peter Gabriel to go with the songs. And as I say, in the bright mix, it's exactly the same. Now, if I just take you to... One of the, if we just linger on this song for a moment, I mean, this song is called And Still. And Still. And this song, lyrically and musically, is utterly breathtaking. I have just, I could put this on a loop and play it for 12 hours. It is so clever. That's the piece of artwork that went with it. The artist on this particular one, um, when Peter first came into my St. Pancras studio, he gave me headphones that I listened to and still the name of the track. It's about his mother who had recently passed away and I was very moved upon hearing it as my own mother played a crucial role in my life as an artist, um, fostering my curiosity at art from a young age. Um, and slowly as I started to listen to sections of the song, a flea feeling of longing grasped hold of me and I was transported back to my mother's garden. I typically paint in rapid, concentrated bursts, and Peter's song has a slow, undulating pace to it. This song really cradles you in its arms, and as much as lets you soar. So I had to be patient and respond that way. And this song is, it, it's spellbinding. It, I say musically and lyrically, absolutely phenomenal. That one and track called So Much beautiful but of the 12 tracks i'd say at the moment for me personally there's probably about six six tracks i think are excellent and two of those are just exceptional wonderful pieces of work um there's probably another four which i really like really really good tracks and there's two which probably haven't connected with me yet um but the whole album is so clever it just feels when you listen to it, there's so much depth to it. It's taken him years and years to make this. And it, it kind of feels like that. If you, um, I seem to be comparing a lot of things to Hackney Diamonds at the moment, but where Hackney Diamonds, although that took a while, feels very um, intuitive and kind of, you know, in a studio, capture a riff, capture a great feel, brilliant song comes out the end of it. This does feel a lot more kind of, carefully put together layered some beautiful instrumentation on this um it's a stunning absolutely stunning piece of work 
Um, yeah, so this is one probably, so to stream, as I say, the, the songs which really stick out for me at the moment are, well, Panopticon, which is the opening track, is probably the one which doesn't connect with me at the moment, but it's a very clever track. I mean, some people are going to love it. Playing for Time, fantastic. The Court, fantastic. Four Kinds of Horses, good. I and O, superb. Love Can Heal, superb. Road to Joy, Joy, really good. So much breathtaking. Olive Tree, really good. This Is Home, excellent. And still breathtaking. Um, live and Let Live, excellent tracks. So all in all, it's a superb album from Peter Gabriel. And um, I've been doing a top... 10 of albums, new albums which have come out this year and um, I thought I was done but this is definitely going to be way in the, the top 10 when it comes out so uh, I'm going to give you um, a needle drop, maybe two actually, if um, if I'm allowed to with the copyright so hopefully I'll finish this video with a couple of needle drops. So that's Peter Gabriel's I know. By the way, musicians on it, Tony Levin, who has been his bass player for Donkey's Years. I've seen him play with Tony Levin. Superb. David Rose, guitarist. And Brian Eno figures on this quite a lot as well on the keyboards and arranging. And I think he co-wrote one of the tracks as well. But um, wonderful album. Excellent. Hope you enjoy the needle drops.